Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Carlo Oger. I am a board certified emergency physician and in this medical education video we're going to talk about vocal cord dysfunction. Vocal cord dysfunction is also known as paradoxical vocal cord dysfunction, paradoxical vocal cord fold motion and factitious asthma. Vocal cord dysfunction will show up clinically as a patient in strider. In the next slide, we'll see a patient who has experienced severe strider. Vocal cord dysfunction is a syndrome in which inappropriate vocal cord motion produces partially airway obstruction, leading to subjective respiratory distress. When a person breathes normally, the vocal cords move away from the midline during inspiration and only slightly towards the midline during expiration. However, in patients with vocal cord dysfunction, the vocal cords move towards the midline during inspiration or expiration, which creates varying degrees of obstruction. Patients with vocal cord dysfunction typically present with recurrent episodes of subjective respiratory stress that are associated with inspiratory strider, cough, choking sensations, and throat tightness. Laryngospasm is a subtype of vocal cord dysfunction, it is a brief involuntary spasm of the vocal cords that often produces aphonia and acute respiratory distress. Laryngospasm is common complication of anesthesia when they put uh, endotracheal tubes down your throat. What is the differential diagnosis of vocal cord dysfunction? The differential diagnosis will include anaphylaxis or severe allergic reaction, angioedema, asthma, epiglottitis, hypoparathyroidism, laryngomalacia, laryngotracheobronchitis or croup, the presence of foreign body or foreign body aspiration, tracheal stenosis, vocal cord paralysis, and vocal cord tumors or polyps. What are the precipitating factors? Vocal cord dysfunction is associated with a variety of precipitating factors, but no clear unifying pathophysiology has been identified. In other words, we don't know. Exercise is a common cause of vocal cord dysfunction. Exercise-induced vocal cord dysfunction is often misdiagnosed as exercise-induced asthma. It should be strongly considered in patients with dyspnea on exertion who have been diagnosed with exercise-induced asthma, particularly if they respond poorly to the usual treatment with bronchodilators. Studies have reported associations between vocal cord dysfunction and multiple psychological conditions, including PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, depression, and panic attack. Anxiety disorders appear to be particularly common in adolescent patients with vocal cord dysfunction. However, associated depression and anxiety may also be consequence of persistent respiratory symptoms rather than the cause. Exposure to environmental and occupational irritants have been found to precipitate respiratory symptoms consistent with vocal cord dysfunction. Common airborne irritants associated with vocal cord dysfunction include ammonia, dust, smoke, soldering fumes, and cleaning chemicals. Studies have shown a clear temporal relationship between the exposure and the onset of the symptoms. Also post-nasal drip is associated with rhinosinusitis has been linked to airway hyperresponsiveness, a high prevalence of rhinosinusitis in patients with vocal cord dysfunction and case reports of resolution of vocal cord dysfunction symptoms with treatment suggests that rhinositis uh, may play a role in some patients. Gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD has been implicating in triggering vocal cord dysfunction. In some studies, high prevalence of GERD 
was identified in patients with vocal cord dysfunction. However, treatment of GERD was only effective in decreasing vocal cord dysfunction in some of these patients. Neuroleptic drug, especially phenothiazines, may cause transient vocal cord dysfunction. This appears to be a focal dystonic reaction is associated with extrapyramidal signs such as torticollis, which is next spasm. What are the diagnostic approaches? The most valuable diagnostic tests for vocal cord dysfunction are pulmonary function testing with a flow volume loop and flexible laryngoscopy. Other testing such as measurement of arterial blood gases may be useful in ruling out other possible diagnoses. Pulmonary function testing with a flow volume lip is the most common used diagnostic test to confirm vocal cord dysfunction. In the flow volume loop, it is typical for the expiratory loop to be normal and the inspiratory loop to be flattened, which is consistent with an extra thoracic upper airway obstruction. Exercise flow volume loops Performing conjunction with exercise testing may be useful in identifying patients with exercise-induced vocal cord dysfunction. Flexible laryngoscopy is considered the diagnostic standard for vocal cord dysfunction. Direct observation of abnormal vocal cord movement towards the midline during inspiration or expiration confirms the diagnosis. Most patients with symptomatic vocal cord dysfunction will demonstrate the abnormal movement and more than one half of patients who are asymptomatic will be diagnosed. Stimulating asymptomatic patients with panting, deep breathing, phonating or exercising may increase the sensitivity of the test. Treatment is divided in short and long term management of vocal cord dysfunction. On the short term, you must reassure and calm the patient. Instruct the patient in breathing behaviors such as panting, diaphragmatic breathing, breathing through the nose or a straw, or pursed lip breathing and exhaling with a hissing sound. Consider a trial of helium and oxygen, also called heliox, in patients with persistent or severe vocal cord dysfunction. Long term, Avoid known triggers such as smoke, airbone air irritants, or certain medications. Treat underlying conditions including anxiety, depression, GERD, and rhinosinusitis. Consider a trial of inhaled hypertropium or atrophin in patients with exercise-induced symptoms. Referral for speech therapy is indicated in patients with unresolved symptoms. Long-term tracheostomy may be appropriate in the more severe and resistant cases of vocal cord dysfunction. That's it for today. I thank you for watching this video. And for other patient education videos like this one, go to patienteducation.video. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. Hello everyone, Dr. Carlo Oyer. Anyone who knows me would know that I wouldn't say this, but I didn't think it was true. On nights that I'm working early the next day, if I'm going to bed and have a lot of things in my mind, my mind starts to wander and the pressure of falling asleep makes me actually be unable to fall and remain asleep. Um, so the other night I was tossing and turning in bed, I've been like an hour, I've not fallen asleep and then I went ahead and took the rest more, two tablets, I took them and I said okay here goes nothing and I lay down in bed and I don't know how long it took but it didn't take long at all. I didn't toss and turn, I just fell asleep. I thought, well, maybe I psyched myself up. Maybe it was just something else. And the other night, it happened again. Tossing and turning, I need to get up early to do something. Oh my goodness, I'm not falling. I took two towels of the rest more. And again, within 10, 15 minutes, I was asleep again. Um, I keep hearing from people who've been trying the product, same thing, it just puts them to sleep. Restmore is a combination of uh, proprietary blend. It has tryptophan and melatonin, which specifically helps people with sleep shift changes like jet lag, or they have shifts that changes. They have trouble just getting into sleep. It won't leave you groggy, it won't leave you tired the next morning because there's nothing in it that is sedative. So give it a try. 
So thank you. Uh, I hope you give it a try and please let us know how it worked for you. We'd love to include you on our testimonials. Bye bye. Restmore is an essential addition to your medicine cabinet for those times you need to fall asleep but can't. Remember, when you just need more rest, get Restmore. Now available on Amazon. Good night.